basically I was a session guitar player and uh, I'd sit in on sessions and see the engineer behind a desk and from being a guitarist moved on to being the engineer in recording studios and stuff. Good times but uh, it seemed to be more interesting to go and do it live, travel around, see a bit of the world and it's kind of, it's different every day, it's never the same, it's not a controlled environment. I spent about five years mixing Amy Winehouse which was fabulous, one of the few vocalists I've ever worked with and she never sung out of tune. She forget the words, but she never sung out of tune. The first uh, digital Alan Heath console we came across was the iLive, very robust console. I took one of the little baby R72s all around the world with a band called Las Vegas and stuff and we went around all over the place, America, Australia, everywhere. Uh, the usability of it, that's what we really liked. It's, it's the functionality, straightforward. You could just you know, touch and turn, it's all there. You don't have to kind of faff around through menus to find stuff. It's very quick to get to what you want to get to. Which seems to be where the new console, the DLive, is definitely taken off. You, you're not trying to find anything. It's right in front of you, two big screens to see anything. You just touch it and it pops up. It's all there, everything. Um, you, you go near anything to do with the EQ and the EQ's there for you. You want to touch the effect, bang, there's the effect. It's really easy to edit and tweak things on the fly. Uh, there's no like searching for things or sweeping across or trying to find things in a menu. This one sounds amazing, it's like widescreen, it's like you push fader up and you go, ooh, wow, yeah, we like that. When you go to pan anything, move it three, four, five, yeah, and you just feel it shift. It's like everything seems to be technicolor all of a sudden. And the effects now, uh, even more pristine, it's just like this nice little sheen behind everything and when you turn them off it's like, ooh, ooh what's missing, where'd it go, where'd it go? Put that back on you go, ah. On the WETS tour, we've got the S7000 front house console and we've got the 64 rack on stage. For one thing you've got to deal with is the, the volume from stage. It's quite quite loud up there. The guys are all amazing players. We've got a great guitar player, great bass player, good keyboard player. You know, Mike's a cracking singer, solid drummer. We've got brass section as well. I think we're hitting around 55, 56 inputs at the minute. There's a lot of stuff going on. The 7000 console is handy because there's a lot of faders available, so you can see stuff at a glance, it's all in front of you. You don't have to flip through layer after layer, you can just mix the gig on one layer if you need to. Yeah, on stage it's quite loud. Marty has six wedges just for himself and side fills and some in-ears as well. So there's a lot of ambient noise comes off stage when I, when I mute the PA, it's still really loud. I've got to kind of get over that without it sounding fierce, so I need to make it smooth and fill the holes that need filling and make sure that there's a gap for the stage noise to kind of just be absorbed so you don't notice it so much. That's where stuff like the uh, dynamic EQ comes in. Because as soon as Marty sings, he's got a lot of low mid in his voice. And when you've got an arena full of PA and a stage littered with wedges, that's a lot of low mid you need to deal with. So you just need to find that point at which you want to take it out. So that's when your dynamic EQ can just kind of just edge it out of the way and just make it make his uh, make the voice just punch through the mix nice and easy. And there's also a uh, multiband compressor which is which I've got sitting over left and right. So when I do need to drive it, that it doesn't get quite so hot through the PA system. So it can keep an eye on the top end and the mid and the bitiness and the, whether it's too full. And it's just sat there tickling it. Just just but as soon as you punch it out, you go hey all of a sudden it becomes very hard. I mean, you're basically in a concrete room and you're creating a big load of noise there, so it can be quite harsh. So you've got to really be able to control it. And that's a really, really useful tool. You shouldn't really need to search for a go-to plugin or a this, that and the other or something else or add something else. The desk should be able to do it. All the functions are on the desk. All you do is learn how to use them. You don't have to add anything to it. It's kind of, it's all there in front of you. All the requests people have put in yeah, it, they're on the console, all the fancy effects, all the, uh, all the processing you ever need, it's all there.